Hello, welcome to the second video in the series on Green's Theorem. In the first video, we introduced Green's Theorem and we, we said that uh, it's useful when the curve is closed and the uh, vector field is not conservative. If, it's, if, the, if you're not independent of path, but you are closed, Green's Theorem comes in to help you out. It allows you to trade in your line integral for a double integral over the interior region. In this video, I plan to look at three different examples of um, Green's Theorem problems, all in the framework of here is a line integral, and we're going to replace that line integral with a double integral, employing Green's Theorem. So we have um, our first example is uh, y squared and 3xy, that is the uh, vector field f, and the curve is described as the sort of outline region of, a, of an annular donut type region um, where we have a circle of radius 1 and a circle of radius 2 and then we go along the x-axis there. This would be much this would be much trouble if we were to do this as a line integral because it would require four different parts. Not undoable but a little more trouble than it's worth. So the uh, the curve is closed, the curve is positively oriented, the curve is piecewise smooth, and the curve is simple. When your curve fits those four qualities and the function, the vector field F is um, consists of components P and Q that are both um, you know, continuous and their partials are continuous inside the region, then you can uh, employ Green's theorem and trade this in for a double integral. Let's look at the X partial of Q and compare it to the Y partial of P. So the X partial of Q is 3Y and the y partial of p is 2y. So they are not equal, so we are not independent of path. And so it is closed though. And so when you're closed and you're not independent of path, it's best if you use Green's theorem, where you trade in your integral, your line integral for a double integral. And inside the double integral is the difference between um, the qx and the py. It's qx minus py is what goes on the inside there. It's a double integral over your inside region R. So the yellow shaded region there is the region R. With that region being circular, we should do this double integral in polar. And so Y needs to be replaced by R sine theta. When it comes to the bounds on R, you go from one to two. And when it comes for the bounds on theta, you go from zero to pi. All right, quick little integration. Actually, you know what? This is separable where we have uh, r squared times sine theta is, is, a, is a product of two functions, each single variables of different variables, and the bounds are numerical. This combination allows you to be able to do two separate calc one integrals, single variable, and then you could multiply them together, the results. So we get r cubed over three, and we get negative cosine theta. Negative cosine theta gets evaluated from pi to zero, r cubed over 3 gets evaluated from 2 to 1. You end up with um, negative cosine of pi minus the cosine of 0. Be careful there. Minus negative the cosine of 0. And then 8 minus 1 over 3. So, so the cosine of pi is a negative 1. So that's going to be a 1 plus another 1. So 2 comes out of the first and 7 thirds. Final result is going to be 14 thirds. All right, that's example 2. We're next going to move on to another example where something really nice happens. When, when qx minus py is a constant, then something really nice happens as far as the calculation here. So I have this line integral um, listed as i, capital I here, and this is vector field that has p and q. x squared plus y is p and y squared minus x is q. And um, we have a closed curve. We have a curve that is a triangle. Uh, the origin, 3 on the x and 4 on the y, back down to the origin. Traversed counterclockwise. Okay. And we want to calculate that line integral. We could definitely do the three different parts. It's not undoable. But with p being x squared plus y and q being y squared minus x, qx is negative 1, py is 1. So when you go to subtract qx minus py, you get a negative 2. 
we can employ Green's theorem, put that negative 2 inside of a double integral, and the double integral is over the interior region, which happens to be a nice triangle. Whenever qx minus py is a constant, what you can do with that constant is pull that constant out because the symbol double integral over r dA with a 1 in the integrand represents the area of the region. And this is a triangle. We don't have to use calculus to find that area. 1 half the base times the height. So the area is 6. And the answer to the question, negative 12. So be on the lookout for whenever qx minus py is a constant. Okay, great. Uh, let's try to fit in one more example. Okay, great. Fourth example, uh, third example here today um, in this video. We have uh, y plus e to the root x as the p, uh, 2x plus cosine of y squared, that's the q, and our region is the region that's in between two curves. We have the, um, the parabola y equals x squared and the root function y equals root x. We're going to start at the origin and basically make our way back to the origin. The curve is closed. It is simple. It is piecewise smooth. And it is positively oriented. The interior region is the yellow shaded area there. We can trade in this line integral for a double integral over the interior region. With P being what's times dx, and q being what's times dy, we look at qx minus py, you see that the, the nastier parts of p have, involve x. The nastier part of q involves y, but when we take qx minus py, we get exactly a 1. And so we can trade this in for just the area of that region, because qx minus py is a 1. But this time, though, we won't be able to use nice geometry to figure it out. We could do it as a single integral, though, because, um, you know, it's the area between curves. So it's upper curve minus lower curve. Or it could, it could flesh itself out in doing the double integral. Um, doing a dy dx, the upper bound on dy is the root x function. The lower bound on, on y is the x squared function then it moves from 0 to 1. But honestly, what happens, you integrate out y, and you get the difference between the functions. You could have started right there. Nothing wrong with that. You didn't have to do it as a double integral. It's the error between those curves, and that's represented by upper curve minus lower curve with respect to x. And so we have then um, with x to the 3 halves times 2 thirds, and then minus x cubed over 3. And when you put a 1 in, you get 1 third. When you put a 0 in, you get 0. Two thirds minus one third, so one third. That's it. You did it. All right, so that was three quick examples of using Green's theorem. In the next video, we'll look at one of the rare cases where you want to use it backwards. You have a double integral, you're interested in measuring some area, but you're going to do it as a line integral instead. Okay, and then we'll look at the one case where um, you aren't closed and you aren't independent of path. But you might still want to use Green's theorem, so you close the curve by adding on another part. So that'll uh, be in the next video. Uh, maybe I'll break those into two videos. We'll see how it goes. Well, my name is Nakaya Rimmer. Thank you for watching. I'm here to help you through this multivariable calculus journey. Um, if you need any help, please reach out to me. Um, like and subscribe. Comment down below. Find your way to my website, calcoach.com, for extra resources. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.